today I've got this hickory slab. This is a tree that fell in my neighborhood and I got a piece of the trunk and I have a friend who uh, has a sawmill. So we uh, cut a piece of trunk up into a few slabs and it's still pretty green. So I'm going to make a rough blank out of this and set it aside to dry. Hope you enjoy watching it happen. All right, so the slab is about 15 and a half inches across. So I've marked it out at about 17 inches because there's some checking in the end and I wanna make sure I can get past that when I'm going to rough it out. Um, always worth the time to put on the safety gear. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and uh, cut this off. got the piece over here on my workbench. I've uh, started taking a look at it to see what I can get out of it. And it's got some pretty bad cracking through it. You know, some checks on the end where it was sitting and drying. You know, I don't know how well it's going to show up on the camera, but I got quite a bit of checking over here. And these go down, I don't know, maybe about an inch and put a pretty good ways into it. But on the inside, I've got this big crack that comes all the way down about to right here. So I'm going to have to really turn some wood off of this, getting it into a bowl shape. Like I said, it's about 15 and a half in diameter right here, but by the time I get down below that crack here, it's really more like 13 and a half. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, I've got a circle template. I'm going to tack this on uh, 13 and a half inches and trim it down as close to a circle as I can get on the bandsaw. I got it pretty close to 13 and a half inches here. Uh, the checking looks pretty good. On the one side over here, most of those checks didn't even come through. The ones that are still going aren't too deep. They're not as deep as that crack on the other side. So that leaves me still just with this is the main thing. But even once I turn down past this crack, that's going to leave me, even accounting for the tenon, a, a, a good three inches or so uh, for depth. And I think uh, with this width, um, a nice wide shallow bowl with uh, all this color in it is going to come out pretty good. So I'm going to get uh, center marked and get a faceplate put on there. I usually use the, the template flipped around on the other side. I just do a little nail tap. And that will mark my center for getting the faceplate on. Alright, so I've got it mounted up on the machine here. Um, one of the things that was attractive to me when I upgraded to this lathe, and it was the, the most lathe I could afford, is that you, when you get the outboard extension, it's got up to a 16 inch swing. So I've got it mounted up to turn outboard. The faceplate should hold it on plenty securely. Um, I tested it out before I turned on the camera on. I can only get it up to about 400 RPMs right now before uh, I start walking. So I'm going to be keeping it pretty slow while I start getting this thing round and getting a tenon put on it. I'm going to get a face shield and a dust mask on and then we'll get to it.
So I'm doing okay here. I've still got some uh, big pieces of cambium here and here, so I got a lot of work still to do around the edge. But it looks like I got a nice spot here in the center for my tenon. Um, I'm going to start working around the sides of it now. I've been able to get it up to the top speed for this gear range, um, but that's as fast as I'm going to be able to get it because I found on this machine when you put it into the next gear range, unless you can get it up to around a thousand RPMs, it just doesn't have enough torque, it bogs down. So I end up better off leaving it on the lowest gear range and running it at full speed, which gives me about, you know, 530, 540 RPMs. Little on the slow side, but then the machine doesn't bog down. Like the bark is all gone. The bark is all gone, but I still got some cambium here. I'm starting to get a little bit dull, so I'm probably going to take a break and sharpen, and come back and keep working at it. And so I got a nice edge back on my chisel, so I'm going to keep going at it. I got a little flat spot here still but here's the end of my crack and it goes down below that so I really think I'm just about round. I just got to take a little bit more off over here and then I can ignore these flat spots because I'm going to have to turn them off once I get past that crack anyways. So I think I've got it round enough. I'm going to go ahead and uh, mark off where the bottom of my crack is so I know what the rim of the bowl is going to be. I'm going to go ahead and get the shape out and get the tenon on it. Looks like I still have just a little bit of cambium left in here, so I want to make sure I get that out. All right, so I've put a Sharpie line around where the bottom of that crack is. I'm probably going to turn off just a little bit of this edge so I get a sense of where my edge is going to be. That way I can get a an idea of the shape that I finally want to get out of this. Got plenty of room here for my tenon, but I've got some cambium here, so I may end up making it a little bit more shallow from this end just to get a nice uh, profile around this little bit that I have to still turn out. So I'm going to go ahead and get to that. started slowing down on me and it's something that this machine does somehow. It has some kind of fail-safe circuit and I don't know that anything was really going wrong, but if I turn it off and turn it back on I usually get the speed back. Still just a little bit of it. 
still just a little bit of the cambium left right here, so I'm just going to be uh, getting the top of the edge a little bit more vertical, and that should take care of it. And after that, I think I've got a pretty nice shape that I like. So I think I've got it. I'm going to refine this uh, little under curve that I've got going on right here. I think it's going to look real nice. And then I'm going to get the tenon on there. We'll flip it around and start hollowing because this is about as good as it needs to be for, uh, for a rough. like to finish off my tendon with a skew just to get that nice and straight and uh, get a nice flat shoulder for the chuck jaws to sit on. Um, I'm going to get another caliper and uh, measure the height of that and then I'm ready to flip it around. All right, so here it is before I get it all the way flipped around. I don't know how the, the lighting is with that little LED light that I use on the lathe. I, I don't know if it washes out some of these colors and shapes. This is an absolutely gorgeous piece of wood and you see how these kind of flame shaped pieces of the uh, heartwood are going to come out into the sapwood and as we hollow we're going to get uh, a whole lot more of this shape towards the inside. This is going to be an absolutely gorgeous piece uh, so I can't wait to get this one done although it's going to be a while because it's going to need some dry time. All right, so I've got it mounted up on the chunk. It's ready to go. Now I've got about a full inch of what's just going to be total waste out here to get down past that crack. And then I'm going to see once I get there. Uh, so I don't know if it shows up in the camera, but it's hard to really tell where the cracking stops. So I'm going to, I'm going to get down in there and see what it looks like. So I've got at least an inch, maybe a little bit more, depending on what I find when I get in there. And then I can start hollowing it out. I guess I'm going to take this down to about an inch thick before I pack it away for drying. sharpen this up. I just don't feel like it's cutting as well as it ought to. So uh, I'll be back in a minute once I tune up my edge here.
uh, cutting real good there for a couple of minutes, but I think I need to sharpen again. Yeah, so as I've been uh, cutting at it, and I think I've got a nice sharp edge again, this crack seems to be going all the way around that growth ring. So I have a feeling I'm going to lose a little bit more of it than I was hoping to. But we'll see. We'll keep cutting. starting to get a little bit burnt. A lot of shavings coming off of here, so I am going to put the glove back on. Start working on the rim now. See how far I have to cut this thing down. See what we've got. Well, we've got a really big crack right here, right here. That's the same crack. Yeah. Uh, maybe not. We got two cracks, and this one. Oh, look at that. That goes all the way into there. That just peels right off. So right along the growth ring. So we've got to go down at least that far. And on the other side. It's open about the same amount. I'm going to lose another solid inch or more off of this before it finally is done. So it's going to be a whole lot smaller than I had hoped. And I'm going to have to just keep going at it. I may be, it might have enough mass off of it now that I can get the speed up. If I can get this thing up to, because I'm really bouncing around because I have to keep it at this slow speed. If it has enough mass off of it now that I can get it up to around 1100 RPMs, that'd be nice because the cutting would go a lot better. So I'm going to give that a try. Alright, so I've sharpened up again, but this crack is a lot worse than I thought. Um, a whole big chunk of it came off where the growth ring went through, and I think on this side it actually goes even a little bit deeper. I'm going to lose a lot more of this bowl than I was hoping to. Um, but on the bright side, I've got enough mass off it that I've got to, I've been able to take the latest speed up to around 1200 uh, and I've been able to put it into the next gear range. So uh, it shouldn't be such a bumpy ride from here on out. Of the time I don't bother redoing the outside once I flip it around because it's never quite straight from the face plate back around to the chuck but just because I've got the speed up and it's vibrating an awful lot I thought that'd be a good idea to do so now I'm going to work on taking this back down to the end of this crack they had to put a glove back on too because I was getting some pretty sharp chips flying into my hand Still got a pretty good crack right here and it's definitely open all the way down to right here so I think I'm going to give that a little mark to so I have an idea of how far down I'm going to have to go. I think I'm doing good on my edge for now I'm going to have to sharpen again soon. So here it is. That 
that's what's left of the crack. There's still just a little bit of it. I don't think I have to come down, but just a little bit more, because most of that's going to go away, and I need to be able to keep about an inch here. Let's see what we've shrunk to. Yeah, so we're down to about 12 inches from what I was hoping was going to be more like 13. But you know, it is what it is. It's going to be a shallow bowl, but it's still going to be real pretty. Yeah, that's looking really nice right now, so that's going to be what I go with. And like I said, I'm going to thin that down to about an inch. So it's really close right now. It needs to go just a little bit deeper and I'd like to have this side a little bit smoother. I'm going to have to sharpen one more time and take another couple of passes and then it's going to be ready to go, I think. that one last pass just about took the edge off my gouge here. It's pretty hard wood or pretty cheap steel or maybe a little bit of both. I might try to smooth that out just a little bit but, but given that this is just a rough it's probably about as good as it needs to be. Alright I think I'm gonna call this done for a rough blank. I'm gonna get it off the lathe. We're gonna take a look at it and I'm gonna pack it away to dry. All right, so here it is. It ended up being about uh, 12 inches in diameter and it's gonna be about two inches tall, uh, which is, like I said, a lot less than I was hoping for when I started, but it sure is pretty. So if you look at all that color that's gonna be in there, when it gets a finish on it, it's gonna be not just browns. There's gonna be some reds and some purples in there. Uh, it's gonna turn out really, really nice. Um, so now I'm gonna pack it away in a bag and it's gonna sit for about a year and then I'm going to be able to come back and finish it once it's dried up. Just thought I'd get a quick shot of this. I had to take so much wood off of that thing. It's a pretty huge pile of shavings. Um, so I'm going to fill some of that into a paper bag and uh, then the rest of that is going to go and uh, mulch my flower beds. Alright, so I've got it packed up in a bag with its own wet shavings. I've got today's date and the species on it. It's a piece of hickory wood. And I'll tell you what, my shop sure smells great from all those hickory chips that are uh, laying on the floor now. Um, so I hope uh, you found this entertaining, maybe a little bit helpful. And if I can remember, a year from now when this is dry, I'll make another video for finishing it up. Till then. I forgot to say it, if you enjoyed this video, please do me a favor, like the video, subscribe to my channel, maybe leave me a comment. Thank you so much.